You don't learn sales in a book. That's number one. Um, I, I, I would recommend if you want to get into sales or closing or whatever, buy a course, buy a book, buy things like that so you can understand at least what it is. Yeah, the theory is The theory, just get a vibe, like, is this something I would even like to do? Watch some content. But beyond that, what you're really doing is saying, well, can I be myself even in a situation where I need the income or I don't, I want to do well for my company that I'm representing or my boss or my coach? Okay, well, can you be yourself? When I'm trying to hit a million dollars from stage, if that's my real goal, how do I not mess that up? So then I don't have to do all these tricks on stage. I don't have to do any of the the stuff that people think is necessary. I just get yeah. to 100% own the fact that I'm really good at what I do. I really care about serving people and we've got a way to help them. That's yeah. it, that's all I gotta do. Well, Michael, what's up, man? How are you? I'm doing well. I'm Dude, doing well, man. Uh, yeah, this podcast has been a long time coming. I know we tried to connect a few times, but uh, you've got, I mean, you've got a lot of things going, but when I, when I first met you, it was super closers. Super closer, yeah. Yeah, and that was that was high, high ticket closing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, high ticket. Yeah. So break down, how did you get into high ticket closing? Um, By accident? Maybe yeah, is sounds, probably sounds the, familiar. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. If anybody gets into sales, it's uh, kind of like, how do you yeah. know that you like it or want to try it? You yeah. Know? But um, yeah, I was 19 years old. I left college. I realized I got I got closed into college. <laughs> right. The, the ultimate high ticket <laughs> yeah. for kids. And uh, uh, so <laughs> opinions aside, I got yeah. I was in college. I didn't real. I realized then I didn't want to teach math in high school. Okay. So I was like, oh. That would be hard. Yeah. I was like, okay, got it. This isn't what I thought it was. So I left college, started a business with my good friend. And immediately I realized I didn't know how to market. I didn't know how to sell. And I needed to get really good really quick. So just a lot of reps. Uh, and yeah, we made our own product, an e-commerce brand. And it was about a $5,000 average ticket. And so here's this 19-year-old just doing what he can. Yeah, slinging 5Gs a ticket. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What's okay. So I've been in sales and marketing for over a decade. I've sold, you know, pretty high ticket stuff. I've sold stuff in the millions of dollars, you know, and then I've sold thousands of dollars stuff. Um, but it's a different sale when you're, you know, like if I'm selling a a million dollar machine or like a million dollar business, right. Um, which I've done both of it's, it's a little different than maybe like online high ticket closing. Sure. Um, and, but, Hold on though. I'll put one caveat on this. Sales is sales. Sales is sales. Sales is sales. Yep. It, it, yep. We'll learn the nuances, but it's hundred percent. It's a people game. Right? It's the same thing. But, but um, I mean, are there? What are some of the? What are some of the nuances though of maybe? Because you mainly deal with coaches. Yeah, a lot of coaches. A lot of people that have you know a thing that they built that they're trying to sell. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So that could be a course, coaching program, a widget, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, but w- if you think about a million dollar sale. Right, and you break it down as to what hap- what has to happen for this to work. Really, it comes down to not messing it up. That's really what it is. If you have a good product, it should have some benefit, you know. And if it's B two B stuff, it's usually a monetary ROI. So that million dollar product is going to bring them ten million dollars a year. Why they, they just need it. So you just yeah. your job is to not mess it up. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, when we start talking about coaching and stuff like, especially the intangibles, like life transformation or life coaching, things like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. We could always bring it back to some sort of ROI. Like there's always a way to do that. But yeah. at the same time, it's the same process. You're, you're really just not messing it up. If you have a really great product. Um, <laughs> Bro, I love I love boiling sales out. What do you have to do? What's a sales boiled down to a sentence? Just don't fuck it up. Yeah, that's yeah. it. All right. Like if, if you can do that. So then the question actually becomes yeah. really difficult to answer. How do you, how do you do that? Yeah, how do you not fucking up? Well, you don't learn out of a book. You don't learn sales in a book. That's sure. number one. Um, I, I, I would recommend if you want to get into sales or closing or whatever, buy a course, buy a book, buy things like that so you can understand at least what it is. Yeah, the theory is something. The like theory, that. just get a vibe. Like, is yeah. this something I would even like to do? Watch some content. But beyond that, what you're really doing is saying, well, can I be myself even in a situation where I need the income or I... I want to do well for my right. company that I'm representing or my right. boss or my coach. 
okay, well, can you be yourself? Right? So when I'm on a call and it's, it's a, you know, like this event that I just came from. Yeah. When I'm trying to hit a million dollars from stage, if that's my real goal, how do I not mess that up? So then I don't have to do all these tricks on stage. I don't have to do any of the, the stuff that people think is necessary. I just get yeah. to 100% own the fact that I'm really good at what I do. I really care about serving people and we've got a way to help them. That's yeah. it. That's all I got to do. And I, and I was just, uh, I mean, I say this all the time, but after doing this podcast, because like 40% of business is sell, selling. Um, and I say 40% because if you're, I say 40% if you're a salesman, because if you're a salesman, you got to get deals. But if you only focus on sales, you're going to miss the other 60, which is the operations and fulfillment. And wait, what? A, you have to, fi- <laughs> wait, you're like, wait a minute. If I'm a coach, a <laughs> my job is to sell a shit ton. Yeah. And then that's it, right? <laughs> You're like, uh, but I know, but if you get like, you know, those guys, um, and so I've just always boiled sales down to just like authenticity. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Just like, can you be yourself? hundred percent. Um, because I've, you know, I've met guys who, uh, specifically one guy, I tell the story all the time, but he was just the, the most like awkward guy on paper. But when you got him in front of a person, they loved him. And he and pe- they, people would ask for a discount and be like, "What are you? What the fuck are you talking about? I'm yeah. never gonna give you a fucking discount." Yeah. And it and they would just laugh yep. at them. I'm like, okay, I, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they would you just see him at the table laughing, yes. and then he closed the deal, and you're That's like, it. and you're like, and then I'd see a new guy because I was his manager, and then it, they're like, "Can I do that?" I was like, "Fuck no, you, <laughs> you? <laughs> no, 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 don't do that." <laughs> well, and that's the word authenticity. <laughs> yeah. Right. There's yeah. somebody that can build the rapport. They're locked in. They're yeah. Not friends, but they're friendly now. But yeah, they're, right? yeah, they've got that. And see, this is where I have a problem with like the term relationship selling. But anyway, I'll let you finish. But yeah, it's just being that, like, it's just that connection. You can yes. build that connection pretty quickly. Yeah. And then when somebody's like, well, yeah, is there a better deal? Is there something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I can be like, bro. Yeah. You know, if there were, I would have given it to you. This is yeah. the deal. Yeah. We're already, hey, come on. Are you yeah. really not in? Well, you know, yeah, like that's what I actually call it out. <laughs> yeah. How do you feel about the term um, handling objections? How do I feel about it? I feel, I feel like for people that are new, they need to understand what an objection actually is. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. Fair. Yeah, that's fair. It, it's like uh, my buddy, Jake, he's a phenomenal closer. I got him involved in high ticket closing a couple of years back and now he's crushing it and he'll have his first million dollar year this year. Um, with that being said, he puts it this way. You learn how to read music on the sheet. Yeah. So that you know the rules, you know what it is, you know how it functions so that you can get good enough so you can break the rules. You can start creating jazz versus classical music where I have to do everything perfectly on the page. Yeah. And that's how I feel about objection handling. Um, That's, that's probably one of the best ways I've ever heard it put. Cause I feel appreciate that. It's, it's, it's one of the things that when you're playing jazz, there is no wrong note. Yeah. There is no objection. In fact, in fact, 99% of that is, I feel like my, the person here is my adversary and I'm going to fight him through this and I'm going to, well, I don't know if I can afford it. Well, you did say this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you not, sir? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like objection handling happens when you're not really that great yet at playing the jazz. Mm, yeah. If you yeah, can't yeah. float b- b- beneath and about around and above and below the, the, music on the page you'll get the objections yeah but why do people object why would you object right because you don't have the trust in them right the trust in the product yeah i'm just something, not sure yet. something yeah. doesn't feel yet. Yeah, I don't, i'm not ready i'm not ready yeah but what if you were right what if i yeah. what if i already knew that three minutes in when you when you the body language or the the tonality if it's a phone call yeah. suggested i don't know if i trust you i don't know if i if i feel acclimated enough to your brand to say yes yet right and I could just call that out. Hey, did you even watch the videos I sent you beforehand? <laughs> I, I've said that yeah. a million times on a call where it's like, hey, you don't seem fired up for this phone call. What's going on? Yeah. Usually if somebody's like on, like they have to add, they, they tell me I'm ready to buy. What's what's the cost? Take my credit card number. You're not there. Yeah. Like, why is that? And they're like, uh, yeah. well, no, I didn't watch the videos and I, uh, I'm, new, I'm new to your brand and I'm new to this thing. And then the yeah. walls can come down. We can talk about the real stuff. Which is Th- then you're not handling anything. No. Now you're just being authentic. You're just being, being like, hey, look. You're just being like, yeah, you're just like. And you can actually serve them there. 
Right. And, and, uh, and I think one of the biggest things when you, I love that you talk about like, you know, the rules enough to break them because I think one of the things that helps salespeople is that kind of, uh, novelty in the conversation, which is like, like one of my favorite, whenever, whenever somebody says like, I don't have enough time, my favorite response is like, Oh, thank God me either. Yeah. And because it's kind of like people do that, right? Yeah. They laugh. They're like, oh, okay, all right. I, yeah. I get it. I hundred percent. Yeah. Because it's so sorry. I didn't expect you to say that. Right. Right. hundred <laughs> percent. Well, especially when somebody's like, yeah, I just don't think I can do it. I'm like, I believe you. <laughs> Having said that, Joe, you, you did do all of these things in your past. Right. And they didn't work. And you said that this was going to work. Am I, yeah. am I missing something here? Am I crazy? Am I crazy or can you actually do this? Yeah. Like, yeah you're just like, it. yeah, you're just like taking somebody off guard a little bit. You're just saying that one thing like that, right? Like, hey, most of the time I talk to people are super jazzed. You don't seem like that. Can you, seems like there's a reason for that. Yeah. I, I and I, I'm very. <laughs> you're like, oh shit. Yeah. I guess up, so. Like, like what you see is what you get kind of a thing. Yeah. So I call it out, but, but sales, you know, the old, the old way of looking at it, which is still very much so true is that it's a transference of trust. Yeah. So. If I can transfer my belief in this thing to you, right? then at least we're, we can start on the same playing field. Yeah. But I want to take it up to the next level to say, I'm not, I, I'm really not trying to push you into buying the thing. In fact, if it's not going to serve you, we should end the call, the, the conversation. Yeah. Maybe it can serve you in a different way. But that transference of trust is still there. But how do they trust you if you're not yeah, being, being yourself? Authentic, yeah. I, I don't care about the weather. I'm not going to ask you, how's the weather? Where are you from? Well, how's your kids? Like, I don't care. But yeah. not because I don't care about you and your kids and the weather and how your life is. Right. Because that's not why you called. That's not why yeah. we're on this phone call. Yeah. So I will tell people that. I'm like, hey, listen, between you and I, yeah. you know, so somebody asked me, this is years ago, but I remember it. And I will always <laughs> snicker about it. Yeah. But they're like, they say, you're really good at this, man. I'm like, good at what? Just to, because I, I didn't know what yeah. they meant. Yeah. I'm like, you're really good at selling. And I was like, Oh, that to me kind of hurt my feelings because <laughs> I'm not trying to sell this to you. It just happens to be a really great fit. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, and then they asked me this question, well, do you mind if I ask, like, do you pay, you paid like a commission or like a salary or something for this? And I was like, I'm going to be, I'm going to be real with you. I'm a hundred percent commission yeah. and I'm, I'm new in the higher high ticket space at this point. I'm a hundred percent commission. So if yeah. you say no, I go on to the next phone call. We have 50 calls a, a week now. I'm going to go on to the next phone call. It's going to be a yes or a no. One out of three people say yes, but it's not because I'm pushing you. Yeah. So if you want to say yes, I get paid a commission, but only, I'm only going to make that offer if it's a great fit. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, uh, I, I mean, I always, I don't know why uh, sales, I mean, I do know why sales became a swear word, but in the, in, in today's world, there's no reason for you to, to really try to push it harder or anything like that. Like, I think one of the best tools you can give a salesperson is the ability to say no to yeah. you. Yeah, you got to know who it, your your yeah. thing, your widget, your offer is right for. Yeah, um, but then that now we start talking about the bigger picture of yeah. marketing. Are we even marketing to the right people? Are we right, right, right? Are we are we saying like it's okay that we can just have just anybody have our product? Like, uh, I, yeah, I don't, I don't think so. Yeah, how do you feel about the term relationship selling? What do you think about that? It depends on how it's used. Um, you know, some so some people might use that in the sense of like going to your network, right? The okay. people that you know, relationship selling, build, build the, the relationship over time. Yeah. And then you, you know, the, the Gary V jab, 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 right hook. Right. Kind of, kind of approach. Um, and that stuff I think is, is normal. Like I love doing business with my friends. Of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other side of that where we start, where we start talking about like, I need to become your best friend on a 45 minute phone call. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, no, not, not for me. Now there are some people that we talk talking about authenticity, yeah. genuinely want to, and need to build that relationship both ways as the, right. the sales professional, the sales rep, the closer, yeah. but also the, the personality on the other side. If we start talking about like personality science, they might be that green. I need to feel connected and, and you know, that makes me feel comfortable to move forward. Yeah. Um, and so you have to know your audience too. Like yeah. there are some times where I, I don't drop a lot of F-bombs just my personality, just in my life. Yeah. And yet there are some of those personalities where I'm like, if I don't crack through in 60 seconds or less, the trust isn't really there. Yeah. And they can't really understand what I'm about to share with them. 
Right. So I, I, I need to place a well, well-timed F-bomb. I know it. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Which is not a bad thing. No. Right. I don't think so. Um, so yeah. I knew, not- I knew some people who, if I was like, who I've, I sat across from and I was like, if I just say a swear word right now, everything's going to change. Yeah. Hundred percent. Because some people are just like that, and then yes. then you have the opposite, which is like, dude, if they ever heard me say yeah. a swear word, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, and yeah. I appreciated you taking it there because I kept right. saying messed up, and then you said fuck. <laughs> so he you say whatever. That's you want leadership. To. Yeah, that's leadership. <laughs> Dalton is a true, bona fide, genuine leader in that. Yeah, there you go. So. <laughs> you can use that snip somewhere, I'm sure. Dude, but yeah, I because I feel the same way about relationship selling. I don't think there's anything bad or wrong about wanting a relationship. But my question to people who kind of push that is like, all right, well, when does uh, building the relationship end and when do you actually sell? Yeah. Like when do you start selling? Yeah. Because like eventually um, value has to, like we have to ch- change money, hand. Money yeah. has to change hands. Yep. Like 100%. You're never going to get what I'm selling you if you don't pay for it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and that's the thing. Some people are genuinely like, they didn't learn this in a book, mm-hmm. right? But if they had an hour to close a deal, 40 minutes of that was just rapport, shooting the breeze, maybe a few questions yeah. here and there, right? And then they land the plane in 20 minutes or less, right? Because it's like, yeah, like, dude, this was a phenomenal, like, I see exactly where you're at. This makes a ton of sense. That's why we built this thing. Like, yeah. this is the absolute, like, right, right. you see where I'm going. And I yeah. didn't, I didn't tell you any details almost at all about it. Right. But now they get that, okay, this guy is genuine. This is actually who he is. Um, and clearly they have something I need. I already had the context coming into this phone call and in 20 minutes, he was like, yeah, we're going to do all these things with you. Does that sound, I mean, that seems right for you. Right. Cool. And Hey, it's 10 grand, right? which is way less than you said you paid for the other program. (laughs) So, yeah. So well, and then they, it's an assumed close there. Well, yeah. And that's what, so like, how do you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause that's the question I get sometimes is like, how do you, how do you ask for the sale? Like, what the fuck do you mean? How do you ask for the sale? You just, have you done everything right to ask for the sale? Because if you've, if you've done everything right, like you were saying earlier, like don't fuck it up. If you've done everything right up to that point, asking for the sale is just, hey, it's 10 grand cash or card. Yep. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. You know awesome. what I mean? Yeah. It's like. <laughs> 100%. It's like, what do you mean? I, I don't have to ask. <laughs> and the craziest thing is going to the basics will fuck it up faster. That's, yeah. Because yeah, then yeah, what yeah. happens? Your energy changes, your your position changes, yeah, yeah. your vocal tonality, your body language. So it's like, okay, so let me tell you the details, the the, the features and benefits of the, and it's oh, like, wait, yeah. we weren't talking like that. Where did yeah, Michael yeah, go? relaxed. Right. Yeah, yeah, you're like, hey, chill. Um, and it's <laughs> well, usually the price is, <laughs> but for you today, for fast action takers, yeah, you know, and it's yeah. like, <laughs> you're gonna do that to me? I thought we were friends, right? Yeah, don't you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. like. It's just, come on. Because, well, because if you were actually selling something, you'd be like, yeah, it's 10. I mean, I, I take the grocery store approach to pr- giving out price. You roll back? What are you doing? Oh, just point at it. Oh, just point at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, what's the price? Three ninety nine. What are you yeah. talking about? <laughs> it's like, you it says, it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> didn't you know that? You didn't? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did that even in cars and that was fun. Nice. Like, what's the price? It, was, uh, it says it right there. Did you? It's on the Yeah, stick. be like, it's right there. Uh, and then, and then that was funny because then we'd laugh and whatever, but that's yeah, cool. uh, it is, it is. Yeah. And that's why I don't, th- you, you can't practice during a game. You don't practice during a game. That, put have, that on yeah. a shirt, put that on a shirt, man. Cause <laughs> you know, sometimes you, you have to like, I yeah, get I, it. Yeah. But at the same time, that's why, that's why you do role plays. And that's why you work with mentors and coaches that know this stuff. Yeah. Um, because now you can have a thousand at bats before you ever, Right. Before you're ever facing the pitcher yeah. in the game. And so I, I'm a big proponent of practice. I, I really am. Um, and oftentimes just applying all of the things you already know. It's just, can you, are you playing jazz for yeah. real? <laughs> do you, do you know the patterns? Do you, can you feel it out yeah. or are you still mechanical on the approach? Um, yeah. and so just like doing this interview, this is, this is fun, yeah. right? We don't have a script. <laughs> I don't think people knew that. I think most people assume we yeah, have a script. Yeah, most of you. And no, we do not have a script and Dalton is amazing. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You're like teleprompters I'm, everywhere. I'm not. Yeah. It's just like, we're playing jazz. We're in the moment. We're doing the thing. Yeah. And you know, the coolest thing, like if you really break down humans, most of them just want to be more confident. Like they just want to be in an environment 
where they, they feel like they're up leveling in some way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so if yeah. they feel that energy in, in a call or an appointment or whatever you've got sales wise, that they've now, you know, they're in an environment where the, the desired outcome is now normal for them. Yeah. Okay, cool. That, yeah. You bring up a really great point. Cause, uh, I love, and, and I, and I use this example all the time, but I had a sales guy on the sales floor. He would, he started and he would come to me and it's like every deal. He was like, this guy's a dick. This guy's a, this, she's an asshole, whatever. Like, right. And I was like, and then I started counting and I was like, bro, you've, you've said this about the last 10 people. And then I was like, can I go listen to you and just see? Cause like, if you really got 10 asshole, you need to go like play the lottery or something sure. like you hit it, dude. Yeah. Like, uh, and, and he, I went out there and he was just like, he wasn't mean to anybody, but he would, he was, his tone and the way that he was talking was like kind of like condescending, but he was almost treating people like he was anticipating that they were going to be assholes. So imagine how you would treat somebody if you thought they were going to be a dick to you. Well, and then he guess, was like, guess what you get? Hey, you, yeah. yeah. And I, so I told him that I was like, bro, you're, why don't you just treat them like they can buy? Yeah. And then they'll probably buy from you. For sure. <laughs> easy, but it's easy. that kind of like, like, I'm not going to assume anything about you. No, right. You, you really can't. Well, and, and that goes bigger and, you know, wider than, than sales. That's just human. That's human. That's yeah. human. The reticular activating system. If you're, if you're looking for <laughs> that's it. That's the second time I heard that today. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. If, if you're looking for it, you're going to find it. Yeah. You know, and I'm, I'm always looking for a good time. I like to have fun. Yeah. Right. I, I'm a big proponent of helping people grow their business or making more income or revenue. That's, that's really fun for me. And guess yeah. what? I get a lot of those opportunities. Yeah. You know, so when we started Super Closer, uh, it was just an idea. I was like, you know what? There's a lot of great sales coaches out there and, and content, but they're, it's all the same to me. It, it's it, all it the is, same it to is me. Though. Yeah. And that's number one. I don't think sales really changes at all. It's, there's no new information we're going to discover there. Yeah. And yet there, I had a, I had a chip on my own shoulder. I was like, you know what? I learned from some coaches that taught me NLP and word tracks and tricks of the, you know, really let's call it manipulation and not the best way. I didn't know that at the time. Yeah. And so then when I started doing it, I felt it. I was like, wait a minute, I'm gaslighting people. Like I'm, yeah. this isn't working. This isn't how I want to do this. Right. And so I had to throw the script away, so to speak. And then I realized, oh, wait a minute. So when I call things out it, yeah. in a direct way, just how I would do it, people respect it. They trust it. They know that they're going right. to, what, what they see is what they get. Right. And, and so I don't have to do anything else. That's it. And I can, I can make more money and be more fulfilled. Right. And you can just treat people like people. That's weird. <laughs> um, yeah. But what, but I had to be confident and, and comfortable just being myself first. And I, I haven't always been that way. And so sure. I would lean on the guidance of other people. I would become a chameleon. I would take in their trainings and regurgitate and just mm-hmm. recite. And at some point when we started Super Closer, the idea was that there was a very specific and simple approach to high ticket sales that is not slimy. It's not unethical, doesn't rely on any word tracks or anything like that. A bare bones process to go through. And if you can effectively go through the process, put your skin on the bones, yeah. you're going to crush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you said something there that I always uh, kind of, I love reiterating when we talk about sales and that's the difference between persuasion and manipulation and, and manipulation is you wanting somebody to do something good for you. And persuasion is you wanting someone to do something that's good for them. Right. And then, and I think even on top of that, yeah. you have influence. Yeah. Wanting them to want to do something good for themselves. <laughs> yeah. You like, know? I, like, dude, if you go, you going to the gym does nothing for me. Yeah. Right. Like, but I still want you to go to the gym. And so I'm going to try to find a way to influence and persuade you. You know, I, I lo- so I, and I love to get sneaky. I, I've, I practice on my wife, babe. <laughs> I love you. That's hey, why. Hey, that's your first sale. That's my first. I, I closed yeah. hard. I, I, everybody punches above their weight when they get married. I'm trying. And, uh, and Wait. that's your first sale. Yeah. No, I, I, <laughs> if you, if you doubt my closing ability, just look at my wife. Um, <laughs> she's awesome. <laughs> I heard, I heard a really, it, it shouldn't be, it's, it's a, it's a funny joke. It's a joke. It's a joke, everybody. But he said, he said, like, if you want to, I he he's made a joke and he said, I'd never trust a salesperson with an ugly wife. <laughs> fair, fair. And ugly can be more than just physical. Come on. Yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, it's a joke. Shut the. Fuck you up. guys are yeah. rude. <laughs> Let's alienate the audience. Real that's quick. right. That's right. No, but it's it's one of those things that like I'm like, hmm. 
you know what? I really like, I, I, my wife really wants to get in better shape and all this stuff. And we're yeah. kind of both on this kick. She's a personal trainer. She's in great shape. Um, but having said that, that's something that she wants. And I know that she's told me a million times. So I'm like, Hmm, well, what do I do? Well, now I go deep. Okay. I go into like the lab and I'm like, well, number one, she, she, of the two of us, she's in better shape. She's always, you know, just been better shape. Yeah. And I'm like, well, if I really start pushing myself and she starts seeing the result and all of a sudden I'm punching above my weight class, so to speak yeah. in the, my physical health, what's she going to do? I already know the competitive side of her <laughs> is going to see it. It's so when I take off my shirt at home, really, you know, seductive, like, and she's yeah. like in the perfect lighting, by the way, yeah, she's yeah, like, yeah. babe, you're looking really good. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm just being consistent and doing all the things yeah. you told me about. Yeah. And, and guess what now she's, she's <laughs> pushing herself. And there's like that level of deep influence that I think, you know, when we start looking at sales yeah. is, is really important. So, you know, I, I just get really, I call it out, you know, so yeah. we have some closers that are phenomenal at their craft and they want to be on, you know, a wealth uh, building offer, let's say. Yeah. But I, the question, the number one question is, how's your wealth? Right. And if you don't feel like you're that person, no problem. You can work on those things. Yeah. But probably not the offer to be, you know, within integrity for you to sell. And I, that's my personal thing. Some people I, will say- I think so. No, I think you're right though. And and I think there's a time and a place like when you can maybe create an offer that you maybe you're not at that level. But so like a good example of that for me is like, like I have a mini <laughs> little sales course, right? Yeah. I'm not like the, I'm not the world's number one seller. I've made, I've you're made enough money. <laughs> what pretty it? good. You know what I mean? But like I made enough money. If you're an SDR or an entry level salesperson, I can teach you. Uh, if you're an enterprise salesperson at Adobe, you probably don't want my thing. Sure. <laughs> sure. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Uh, but I love that. I love that you mentioned that because The Wolf of Wall Street is probably the best and the worst sales movie that you could watch. Yeah. One of the best sales, but one of the best scenes in that when you're talking about sales is um, <laughs> when when uh, Jonah Hill's character comes up to uh, him at the beginning and he's like, what do you do? Yeah. And he's like, yeah. Uh, I do this. And he's like, if you show me a check right now, like I'll leave everything and yeah. come work for you. And he's like, okay, well, there you go. And then he's like, and then it was, it was the perfect kind of like how you should sell something like very, like you're in the flow. You're not really pushing anything. You're just like, here's the proof. That's it. And I would expect you, I would expect nothing less yeah. than you could do it. Right. Yeah. Like, um, and then it's the worst sales movie for a new, you know, you know, there's other a reasons, couple but, other, yeah. There's some on. But I like that. But that one was kind of, that one was kind of like, oh, this is. Smooth. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. How it works. Well, and, and you know, the cool thing is like, you don't have to, like, if you're in sales, if you're a closer or whatever the, the role is, you don't have to be the, per, you're not the person teaching necessarily. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> so you don't have to be the wealth expert and yeah. uh, independently wealthy for, you know, forever to be in sales. It's probably not. That's mutually ex <laughs> exclusive usually. Yeah. Um, but with that being said, like we have to, there's a certain level of integrity that we get to carry with that. Yeah. And, uh, and that's what I look for. And, and again, I, I've, I've just adopted this approach that closing and high ticket sales, stuff like that can be really, really simple, not necessarily easy. Yeah. And I have to go first. I will tell you straight up. I'm the most regular dude you will ever. <laughs> I'm not an unusually tall. I'm a shorter guy. Right. Like, uh, I, I, I stammer on my words. I don't know everything that I'm going to say well in advance. Um, I have a, I have a good life. I'm just, I'm a normal person. Yeah. And so when I show up that way on stage, on a podcast, uh, on a sales call, whatever it might be, and I'm just me, dude, the, the fireworks go and, yeah. and it kind of unlocks this like unconscious or subconscious permission slip. And other people to be like, oh, I can just be me too. Yes. I was going to say that. Yes. So the crazy thing is if we, if we rewind eight years ago, I started a Facebook group eight years ago, seven years ago, six years ago, something like that. Se seven years ago, started a Facebook group. And I was like, you know, I don't want to start a Facebook group of people that are just clicking buttons and they're in a Facebook group and they're never going to engage. They don't really care about the content because yeah. I'm really passionate about this. I need people who are similar. So I decided to, to, uh, make it a paid Facebook group, five bucks a, a, a month. That's it. Or $50 a year if you wanted to pay, 
you know, the big bucks for the year. Yeah. And I told a few people, I was like, hey, I'm going to start this group. It's going to be paid. I'm like, but Facebook groups aren't paid. Why would somebody pay to be there if they could be for free? And I was like, that's the point. That's, that's the barrier to entry. <laughs> it, it $5, because why? It's going to be invite only. I'm only putting high level content there. I'm going to tell people like, hey, when I speak at an event, I'm going to break it down for you. Uh, what happened? How did it go? When I, when I, whatever I'm doing, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to share all. Five bucks a month. I think it's a no brainer for the right people. So we, I invited the first 500 people. Uh, from there, I incentivized all of those 500 people to essentially become an affiliate. Yeah. That they get to earn a dollar a month per person that successfully joins the group which everyone loved, by the way, which was really interesting. And before I knew it, we had 3,200 paying members in oh. a Facebook group that should be free. And so a lot of people that caught a lot of people's attention, they're like, how'd you do it? What's the VSL look like? What's the landing page? What's the process? And I was like, the process is um, all the goodies are in here and you you go to this link to pay. And then you, you go into the group. <laughs> That's the... That's just, that's, that's it. Uh, that's the magic process. sauce. Yeah. There's nothing. Yeah. And it, it would blew so many people's minds. And I, it just comes down to the fact that I was just like, this is how I want to do it. Yeah. And if you want to be in a cool community, you could be a part of it. It's five bucks. It's going to keep out the spammers and we can actually get to work. Yeah, that's true. And, and there is something just about putting, you know, like having skin in the game. Yeah. Like that makes you want to like go do that. And I think $5 is a great number because it's not really, you know, it's nothing crazy. But break the bank. Yeah, but it's going to be there for you yeah, when you 100%. need it. Dude, that's cool. And I think there is something so beautiful about simplicity. About like, because then you read, you know, I have a book club and, and we're going to read Alex Hormozzi's like $100 million leads. Or oh, okay, cool. And I've read all of uh, Russell Brunson's stuff and Alex Hormozzi's stuff. And, and, and there is a lot of knowledge in there. But I think people get so caught up. And this is why I love when you said like, don't read a sales book because- it's so caught up in all these processes and like, you know, little gears that, oh, is this gear and this gear? Yeah. And you're like, no, how about you just fucking, if you want to be there, sweet. If you don't want to be there, I don't care. No, like absolutely. it's going to be there anyway. It's there. <laughs> like it's, yeah. It's so, it's so wild. You it's hit on, so, you actually hit on something really big. Yeah. If I were to copy and paste somebody else's business for me, I, I should not ever expect the outcome that they have. Yeah, that's now, fair. you can learn how to do things. Right, which actually I think that's where the Hormozy books come in. How I, and, to build an offer. Yeah, and they're great. Right? If you don't know how to build an offer, yeah. read the book. Yeah. Right? Having said that, if I if I tried to do his business model, putting out 200 pieces of content a week, yeah. I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't sustain that. My that's business wouldn't work to, yeah. right now. It, it wouldn't. Um, because I, I need my time and, and I, I just can't do that right, right now. It wouldn't make sense. Um, but I, I would, I would be focused on making content, not offers and no business would happen. That's yeah. just for me. <laughs> right. Most people probably wouldn't work unless they just, ha that was part of their process. But the point is if we copied and pasted somebody else's business model, it's not for us. Yeah. If I, if I really break it down, think about Russell Brunson, great example. He, he doesn't, people don't know this. I mean, he gets paid to speak and books and stuff like yeah. that. What is he actually selling? Click funnels. Which is a. Software. Right. He's a software guy. Yeah. So follow me here. Why, why do we think the funnel is going to get us there? Why don't we make a software? That's what Russell Brunson should be selling us. <laughs> How to build a software. How to make and crush a software. Dude, That's his actual offer. Yeah, which is so funny. Here's what's funny about that is because you read his book and you're like, how does this work for software companies? <laughs> you're like, wait. Shut the fuck out. <laughs> but like, how does this work? Like, I don't get it. Uh, how does this work for e-com? Like, did, like physical products that you put in the mail and ship. Sure. I don't know, like a book? Right. The book. one that he just sold you? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but that's, that's the, the, real, yeah. the real fun part because uh, yeah. there's, there's the thing that we're being sold, which a company, that's their you know business, yeah. makes money, they sell things. But we got to start really opening our eyes to what's working, what's not working. Right. When you realize that Russell Brunson wanted to create a software to help people to do some of the things that he was able to do. Yeah. Okay, cool. Awesome. You'll need a funnel or a website or landing page, whatever the case might be. Right. But what, what about build your own software? What about, what about 
the idea of why don't you build something that works for you the way that it should. Yeah. I wanted to show up and play in a Facebook group for an hour a week and make 15 grand a month. That's what I wanted to do. <laughs> okay. Why don't I just build that? Yeah. Why do I need to have a VSL and a thing and an upsell and a downsell and a thing? And blah, blah, blah. Right. Well, and, and then you, because everybody's so critical, right? Because um, like, what would Russell Bumpton think about this VSL? Well, Russell Brunson's probably not your customer, dog. Not your ideal customer. Yeah. How about you just talk to, and, and Russell Brunson will teach that too. Sure. He, yeah. he teaches that you got to speak the language. But, but at the same time, it's like, oh, I wonder if I'm selling, if, if Jeb Blunt will like how I'm selling this. It's like, shut, no, yeah. you're not selling. If he was in front of you, then we should be worried right, about that. Right, right. <laughs> you're like, but he's not, dude. And and neither are your haters. Yeah, that's by right, the that's way, right, for, right. to blow it up, people <laughs> well, that don't like you don't don't matter. There's that right. old, uh, a really famous sales story of that that uh, HVAC guy. He goes to an old lady's house and he starts going over. Uh, you know, we can put the unit here and it'll come here, and these are all the BTUs and everything. And then the he goes, all right. And after an hour, he goes, all right, ma'am, do you have any questions? And she's like, yeah, just one. Will will everything that you're telling me keep me warm? <laughs> Perfect. You're like, damn it. <laughs> Got to know your audience. <laughs> You're like, yeah, yeah. Look <laughs> yes, the BTUs that um, at this like, rating with this diameter of piping. Is yeah, you're like, you're like, hey, d what do you want to do? I just want to be warm. Okay, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. How warm? Yeah. Okay, all right. Right, right, right. Got it. Here's but, the solution. But isn't that it? Like, that's why I think there's. it's so beautiful just to be simple. Like, you're talking to another person. Yep. Just talk to them. Straightest, just, I mean, the, the, they always say the fun. shortest path between two points a is straight a straight line. line. Yeah. And I like to try to keep that as short as possible. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, and and the thing that elongate or the things that elongate that and make it complicated and all these things, number one, start up here. They don't actually exist. That's fair. I, I don't need. I agree. I agree. If, I, if, if you wanted to, you could close me in two seconds. I guarantee it. Yeah. Number one is I'm easy. Right. Number two is you already know that like, hey. Well, he's probably said five different things on this very show or things that I know from our experiences in the past that could yeah. probably serve him. Hmm. Hey, yeah. man, are you trying to do this? Yeah. Okay. I got an opportunity. Are you interested? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, it looks like this. Okay. It costs this and you get all this. I'm like, that's yeah. easy. And if it, and if it works, sweet. And if it doesn't, no worries. Yeah. And it, it, it will likely work for you. You know, it's like. <laughs> well, it will, no, okay. what I'm saying is like for the customer. Yeah. Like. That's what I love telling people that. I'm like, hey, if, if it works, sweet. If it doesn't, no worries. Because I, I genuinely, but you have to mean that. Like that if that closing line works for me because I genuinely mean it and they feel it. And then they're like, then there's nothing to lose yeah. at that point. When I, I probably have a hundred different recordings of calls where it's in 10 minutes. I get to know the person. Mm -hmm. I understand it's not a fit. And I tell them. And I tell them, I, I will tell them if it's not a good fit. Mm -hmm. um, and that ability to be the doctor be able to diagnose and say oh you don't need to yeah. learn, like like for one for example we had a course um that i'm actually going to start bringing back uh called the signature talk master class okay um I, it's no secret i've i've been able to do excuse me oh my gosh i'm <laughs> destroying things i've been able to do really well from stage yeah it's the same for me as a, a phone call in in similar ways and uh and with that the course it's a thousand bucks it's it's a no brainer for somebody that feels like they have something awesome to offer. Yeah. And, uh, and with that, one of the things that I'm willing to, or I was willing to, to do is say, Hey, this isn't for you. I will tell you immediately. As soon as I recognize that, I will tell you, boom, boom, boom. Not a good fit. Yeah. Easy, no hard feelings. And guess what happens? They start referring business. Yeah. Oh, like, but you should go see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because people, yeah, cause they know exactly who it's for, who right. it's not for. They're my best sales rep. Well, and point. and at that point, you feel comfortable referring them because you're not like if I refer somebody to you, um, because I know that you're going to tell them no if it's not a good fit. So yeah. I'm not the bad like you referred me to this and he closed me and it was bullshit. Yeah, yeah. It's like no, 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 because I know that he's going to tell you. No oh, yeah. If it's like, like wait, and he's then if, willing to be honest yeah. and transparent. With and then if he this. told you no. Or if he, or if you, he felt like it was a good decision and you two bought it. And now then like, that's not me, dude. Cause I know that. Yeah. I love I, that. I will, I will do my part. Yeah. I will do my part hundred percent. Well, yeah. But then some people just like to bitch. Some people just want to have a bad day. <laughs> yeah. I, I've, I've had some, some bad day people. Uh, right. But like, sure. but like there's those people who just, you just can't please them. They just want to have a bad day. So you just, all right. 
Easy enough. I, I, I like <laughs> refunding. I, I don't, I, you know, honestly, I, I can count on maybe, maybe two hands, how many refunds I've ever had to do, but it's because it's the same process and it doesn't matter what I'm selling or how I'm doing. Yeah. It's the same thing. Uh, the way that we market, who we're actually willing to jump on a phone call or go through the sales process with. Yeah. How close to integritous can we be on that call? Three, can we over deliver and make sure that they have a phenomenal experience? Right, right. And tell more people about it. Like <laughs> it's, it's pretty straightforward, but I, I know if it's not going to be a good fit. Like for example, even this podcast. Right. You know how many times you get asked, I get asked, you get asked to be on yeah. a podcast or do a thing or support right. a thing, whatever it is. You know if it's good if it's going to be worth the time, right? I knew I I didn't even think I, I <laughs> when you said yeah it's in Lehigh and things like that I was like that's a thirty minute drive that's an hour's drive with snow it's a forty five minute drive <laughs> apparently because Utah right that's right though I literally I'm from Chicago where yeah. you know it's, it snows in July and people are still going crazy that's funny I'm from the Midwest too yeah go Midwest <laughs> yeah um and so with that being said I didn't even think oh thirty minutes like I don't know, I don't know if, no, the 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 ability to hang out with you, spend some time, build relationship, put out some good content. I don't even think about the drive, right? right? And it's a no-brainer. So when we think about our business, is it a no-brainer for our people? Can we yeah. take them A to Z and make sure that they're, yeah, it's a no-brainer like, for them. Yeah, and, to, and take care of them and they know that they're going to take care. care. Yeah. And uh, yeah, dude, that's wonderful. And and I love that because at the end of the day, people, yeah, like you said, they want to feel confident. They want to feel uh, that they're, that the, what they're saying and what they're feeling matters. And then if you can check all those boxes, like you're good. Yep. Yeah. You're totally good. Uh, well, Michael, dude, I appreciate you being here, bro. This was really fun. Anytime I get to geek out about sales is great, but before I let you go, where can they follow you, find you, look at your services, all that good stuff. Yeah. I mean, in, in a fashion that might be synonymous with, with what we just <laughs> talked about, I, I don't have anything to sell. Yeah. I really don't. Um, I do have, offers and products and things like that. Um, uh, but having said that, if, if somebody wanted to find me on social, like send me a message, say, Hey, I saw you on the show. That's, that's the best introduction possible. Cool. Um, I have, we have a system. I use VAs for my, uh, inboxes, but, um, I respond to everybody that messages me personally. So cool. Yeah. Shoot me a message. Shoot, shoot me a DM. Let's have a real conversation. Heck yeah. Thanks, Michael. Yeah.